Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And ladies and gentlemen, this evening I would like to return to a subject close to my heart and say a little more about the idea of self-image as it applies to the wonderful world of public speaking. All of us have a self-image. It's something we've built up over the years. It's who we believe we are, how we see ourselves. Of course, we all know how we see ourselves can be very different from how other people see us. And this came to mind quite strongly the other day when reading the dating pages in the newspaper. <laughs> For the innocent in the audience, it's about men seeking women. <laughs> and women seeking men. <laughs> and I hasten to declare, Mr. Chairman, for fear of domestic retribution, you understand that I remain happily married to my first wife and I seek no other. <laughs> but if I had been a younger man seeking a relationship, how would I have described myself to the love-starved and lonely out there? Would it have been truthful? Would it have been truthful to declare acronymically G-S-O-H, good sense of humour, M-B-A, married but available. <laughs> now, Mr Chairman, I'll digress for just a moment to say that this reminds me of an advert I once saw in a shop window in Ireland on a dog-eared postcard. It said, Farmer six attractive young lady for companionship. Must have old tractor. <laughs> P.S. Please send photo of, of tractor. tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Chairman. I, I, was, I was going to say how I would project my own overblown self-image onto the dating pages in the hope of receiving a reply full of Eastern promise and maybe more. <laughs> well, one of my great interests involves using my computer like an H.G. Wells machine. That is, an H.G. Wells machine in reverse to look into the past. This morning, for example, with the magic of YouTube, I watched the 1916 funeral procession of the Austrian Emperor Franz Joseph. And then, after a break for a cup of coffee, I enjoyed seeing some very rare footage of Dundee jute stores in 1920 loading jute into wagons for just tuppence a bale. How many of the affections starved out there looking for a bit of excitement would have found my harmless little hobby an attractive turn on, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> but to return to the point, I'd like us now to ask ourselves, what do we believe others think about us? especially when we come up to the rostrum to make a speech. What do others think about us? We know what we think about ourselves. And I know how I think about myself with my overinflated ego. But what do the others think about us? Well, for those of us who have already taken advantage of Richard Hyatt's offer, to record our rostrumaceous activities, <laughs> lessons will have been learned. We will have evaluated our own delivery, observed our own body language, noted the way our voice 
sometimes fades away to a mumble at the end of the <laughs> A video recording is invaluable because it allows us to see and hear ourselves as others see and hear us. It allows us to make judgments about ourselves, judgments that might hopefully lead to more persuasive and effective oratory. Because, as Confucius admonished, those who judge themselves need no other judgment. Or, as Burns said to great effect, oh, would some power give us the gift to see ourselves as others see us.